Greetings everyone! Uh, today is quite an unusual video because I got something from a friend of mine who owns a computer shop and uh, it's like uh, an old friend coming home thing and when I saw what he got there I had to take it. And, uh, you will actually right away see what it is because of the package. So let me get it for you, right here. So, yes, this is an Atari 2600, which uh, was actually my very first gaming console I ever owned. Not with those sticks though, but with some other ones that were much worse to handle. And when I saw that thing on his shelf, I had to get it because uh, my Atari back in the days, well, I was young and <laughs> I think I sold it and it was quite broken. So join me and uh, see what's inside of this and if it works out after all. I have no clue. Alright, so what do we have here? We have a serial number uh, X718 20,000. Oh wow, okay. So it's one of the later models. This actually is called the Atari 2600 Junior. We don't know that. So what do we have here? We have Atari 600 23 in one game cartridge. This is, oh, I remember that. I had that too in my, my days. And those are quite unusual game plays. I never had those before, honestly. Cool. I like that. It's a nice feeling. Okay, we have original power supply which looks really crusty. I hope it works. Could be, could be not. Uh, it will be quite a pain if it's not working because this is some very interesting plug. I don't think a headphone jack will work with this. You will see. And here we go. Oh boy, Atari 2600 Junior. Yes, yeah, seen better days for sure. Atari 2600 Paul. There it is again. Right. 4276204. So someone put us 4 inside of it. And it's the Paul B version. Okay. Now this is the later ones of the revisions of the Atari 2600. Oh. Uh, that little one got about 128 bytes of RAM. Yeah, I'm talking about bytes of RAM. Uh, about one megahertz CPU. And yeah, a little bit beepers and uh, that's about it. So look out, let's find out if that good thing works. What do we have here in the back? All right, we have uh, antenna. We have, of course, our connections, which are actually uh, Atari uh, made those joy ports, uh, a standard joy port back in the day. So you can put Amiga joysticks on it or C Commodore 64 joysticks. Uh, Mega Drive joysticks work too. They are interchangeable because they're using the same format of uh, putting through the signals. And that's it. Alright, let's get that old dusty box away. So the first thing before I power him on is I will look into this cartridge connector. I don't want to open the cartridge. 
because I've never opened the cartridge before of the Eto guy. I'm afraid I will break it if I do it. But the connection seems a bit rusty. Everyone back in the days blown on that. So I might need to clean that. Let's see if I've got my cleaning tools brush. Yeah, that should work. All right. So what shall we do? We shall do that first right away because it needs a bit drying time. This is a contact spray for cleaning contacts. And uh, it, uh, it's, it's, it's a miracle thing. I really love that. Give it a good scrub, make sure the contacts are clean. And this is not my toothbrush, this is a toothbrush I really just have for cleaning computer parts and stuff like that. goes right here and what I'm looking at now is uh, the contacts they're really dusty okay yeah so uh, this Atari needs a good cleanup so I will do basically the same see the contacts shining. Yeah. This might be an attic thing laying around in the attic or in the garage and for years and years. So always good to make it a little bit clean at least on the contacts before we powering up. And I guess uh, the contacts of the joy ports need a treatment too.
Yeah, that's a little bit of grind there. And I will also clean the RF connector because they usually are giving a bad signal when they're not clean. So the contact spray is uh, solving up anything that's concerned of uh, rust and, and grime on the connections. And it will operate rather quickly. Oh yeah, we need to clean this one too. It really looks dirty. Oh my. I wonder where that bin. Okay, and since we wait for the oil to evaporate, I will clean a basic clean of the Atari. Just to get the dust off. So those buttons are always uh, dust collectors. What I'm using here is a mixture of two window cleaners. Alcohol window cleaner and caution window cleaner of my choice. So it's not in there, but it's there, so don't worry about that. So, right. I'm usually having a mixture of about 25% isopropanol alcohol and a window cleaner. I know that the window cleaner already has alcohol in it, but uh, not enough in my taste. I want that stuff to evaporate a bit more quickly.
a little better already. Just removed 30 years about that surface. There are some scratches here, I doubt I can clean them off. Could be some kind of uh, gun. Maybe just deep scratches. Mm. Let me try. Nope. There's not nothing happened there. All right. Okay. Hmm. Buttons sound okay. Those buttons never really made a noise. Push. Okay, we have channel 2, 3. At the moment we have channel 3. Left control, difficulty A and B. It's an A power difficulty A and B on the second player and right control. Okay. Alright, so the oil should be dry now. Clean up the back a bit. On it. Okay. Let's say let's give this a shot. So we have an RF, RF, RF connector. There we go. to remember how to place it eh? <laughs> in what direction I think that's the wrong one yeah that's the wrong one oddly it's to go all the way around all right what do we have here we have uh, adapter of 9 volts 500 million pair again got our multimeter let's see um, we have 9 volts so we go to 20 and um, the inside is plus the outside is minus So we should get 15 volts, 13, 15 volts, 15 volts. Hmm. DC 9 volt 500 milliampere. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, he should put out 9 volts and not 15. Load 
but right now it's putting out exactly 15, 15. Hmm, I need to check on the internet if that's correct. I don't want to fry that good stuff, good thing. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So as I thought, um, uh, this power supply has an unregulated transformer in it and it just produces the 9 volt when under load. So it's totally fine that it's showing 15 volts. I think uh, that cheap uh, boards and all that stuff doesn't really care after all. It's a very simple connection there. So let's get in. And try to get a picture out of this. TV on. This is not a very good sign. I'm, I'm not being able to get a clear audio and video. either. Wow, okay, so this is not really good. I will, I will make a different search and come back when I found maybe a better frequency. Alright, so here's the problem. Uh, I cannot get a decent frequency out of this Atari. There's always a sound distortion or enormously picture distortion. So I assume that something is going on inside. Maybe grime, maybe some uh, rust. So I might need to open it up. But for now let's have a quick look what you can see anyhow of it. If, uh, the HI part is working. Alright, so I think we need to push reset to start the game. And this trackpad is not working. 
Hmm, how about the other one? They all need a good cleanup. Color. Ah, all right. Okay, that shirt that seems to work. And I got something. Okay, I can move the turret up. moment that picture is not that bad honestly uh, those vertical stripes are, are confusing me a little bit some problems with uh, audio and video but I'm planning to make a composite mod on that one anyway but just out of curiosity how it looks inside I will get my tools and then we open them up maybe we can see some crime or anything that could prevent this image from being perfect Okay, so we have unplugged our Atari and let's have a look inside. We have Philips screws, so this makes things quite easy. We have maybe a screw down here. Maybe not. Not all. Don't look like it. It's from the mold. Oh, this has never been opened before. Did you hear that? And yes, I need a screwdriver with a magnetic head. Sounds a bit scary, after all. And the last one. Oh, okay. No noise. So, I guess the front should lift right up. Oh, 
Alright, I'm back after my camera thought uh, she has no power anymore, <laughs> so uh, welcome back. I was able to open that little guy, little fella, and it came right off like that. I removed that little And as you can see, or maybe not, it is why dirty already? There's a lot of dust and grind on it. And I think I should get that board out from cleaning. So it's not screwed down, it has those clips on the side. on a trimmer 500k mm, shouldn't be that bad but I will resolve that one for sure other than that looks quite well there's a huge capacitor here I shouldn't touch that bit not really. So can we get the shielding off? Okay, the shielding basically is just uh, attached by some small dots. I'm afraid if I turn them around, I will break them. Seems to work. I want to see the whole main board just to make sure there is not much damage inside, or grind, or rust, or whatever happened there. This one needs a small turn. Thank you. 
But uh, concerning, concerning shielding, uh, there are shieldings that are soldered, so I'm quite happy this is not the case. This is an unsoldered shielding. It seems they at least tried something there. Hmm. It's almost off. There we go. Ha! Huh. This is interesting. So we have some other shielding parts. For the shielding side down here, and some clips. Yeah, so that other shielding should come off to basically one shielding supported the other shielding. Except this little feather here. I think I need to remove it too. Pressing and popping off. There we go. And here is the rest of it. All right. This is the whole main board of the Atari 2600 Junior. So I need to look that up, but I think that should be stellar. And all the chips for processing everything. So this is basically the whole computer. What, what's going on here? I haven't really looked into the technical details. What is what yet? Uh, but I'm giving it the optical checkup so I can at least have a look if there's something wrong. Caps look fine, which is quite amazing. Needs a little clean up work. I think I shall do that right away. Yes. And maybe a soldering. There has been a lot of uh, rust, I guess, piling up on that part. Other than that, it looks fine. I expected worse, honestly. So there's a question now, how do we clean this? Uh, a lot of people using a dishwasher. Uh, I'm not really a fan of dishwasher. Uh, sometimes uh, I use uh, condensed water. Ooh, look at that, there's still some power in <laughs> there's still some power in the condensator and just popped up red. So yeah the thingy here it's still something in it. So I'm leaving that on, it gets unloaded properly. All right, so I uh, let uh, the Atari rest now. So all the power is really gone. 
And there are a few things I will do for cleaning him up. Um, right now I am missing uh, my cleaning spray. Uh, the cleaning spray is called Contact WL or WL, Contact WL. Um, so for now I will use a fast method that I will go over with the Contact WL spray later on when it's arriving in a few days hopefully. And that is the usual solution out of uh, isopropanol and distilled water and a little bit of um, window cleaner. And that usually helps quite a lot. So, um, what we have here is now uh, the input output chip for television. We have the processor and we have uh, 6532 memory processor. Um, this is where basically the 128 yeah, bytes of RAM are coming from. Uh, usually uh, that was enough. Some games brought some extra 128 bytes with him on the cartridge. But yeah, that's all it is. So in order to clear it up, I give it a good scrub with my brush. First of all, let's get the dust. Most of it is still from the air vents. So that's where the most of the dust is coming from. Oh, by the way, um, as you can, as you've seen, I've used Contact 60 to clean uh, the connectors. Mm, I will need to use the contact WL spray later on to remove the oily film that's been left on the contacts by the spray. Otherwise it will corrode again. Okay. This is just a quick cleaning here. People have the different approaches of cleaning old hardware. Uh, as I told, some of them use the dishwater, dishwasher to clean them and uh, I'm not a fan of that at all. Um, I'm usually using the cleaning spray for that. Uh, you can also use uh, water that uh, has been cooked and distilled. Usually uh, water and electrics are a no-go, but for cleaning it's not a big problem though. Just to let it dry really good. I see people already screaming now, but that's really one way to do it. Since this is mostly uh, alcohol and distilled water, it should not leave big traces. Let's 
can already smell that this is going to work. It has a, such a distinctive smell of old stuff. It has a really distinctive smell when it gets cleaned. It smells like, uh, I don't know, some kind of bugs and yeah, it's not delicious. It's not a good smell. I'm doing it now for the next well, 10 or 20 minutes. So I see you when this is dry and clean. Alright, so what I did now was cleaning the whole surface with the mixture of window cleaner and alcohol. And uh, after that, I rinsed everything with a mixture of uh, distilled water and also alcohol, gave it uh, a good blow with the heat blower or heat fan. This also warmed up the PCB a bit, so uh, there might be some uh, connection issues fixed by that. And I dried everything down with compressed air and waiting for it to dry on the heater. So all that grime actually is gone now and I can have a closer look on what is going on on the PCB. Right now it seems everything looks fine. There's not a hair of dirt anymore. I see no cracks or other stuff. Check the other side. My light conditions are not the best. The other side though looks a little bit more dirty or more used. I hope this is dirt. No. Maybe some kind of early corrosion made by that uh, flowing soldering adhesive. There's definitely some stuff going on here. But it doesn't look that bad. In a closer look, those two solder joints seem to have colorized because of the use of a different or too hot uh, soldering flux. Mm -hmm. And we have some places where uh, the PCB has a little bit of damage. No idea how that could happen though. But the next step would be for me now to put everything back in and give it a try. And that's what I'm doing now. All right, let's see if we can get the angle right. There we go. So I will plug in that board like it is right now. Everything seems to be clean. Whatever that grind is, it might come from the manufacturing procedure. Maybe it was not that clean after all during manufacturing but it doesn't look rusted or anything. Just quickly and cheaply produced, like most of that stuff. All right. Okay, 
right set to off. I'll plug it in. It's a bit more delicate now. There we go. Ultimately giving it power, but not switching it on now. Okay. Oh yeah, we need a, some kind of controller. And that worked the last time. Let me use this one. Oh, we can now we cannot use a controller because we cannot reset the game. All right, for me it's important now to have at least a picture of what's going on. Maybe that interfering stopped. Maybe it got better. Maybe it got worse. There is no way to know. I should have saved that channel though. I think it was 91, something like that. All right, I will switch it on now. The LED is working. Okay, seems I need to manually find it. Finding anything so far. Also, that LED has stopped, which is not a good sign, honestly. Yeah. The important thing about uh, powering on devices is uh, putting in the power. Let's retry that, shall we? There we go. Okay, it seems we are having the same problem as before. Maybe not, yeah, maybe not that bad anymore. But we are still totally out of synchronization about uh, the frequency and the picture. Sadly nothing really enhanced there. I was hoping that uh, some kind of grime or anything like that uh, made this happen. But it seems we have a different problem here. So what I can do is fine tune a little bit. This small trimmer here has the ability to fine tune the colors. If I turn him. Of course we have no colors right now. There we go. But it's just for color adjustments, it seems, not for signal adjustment. Alright. Okay, so the good thing is the board survived the cleaning process, which I expected. Bad thing is we still have no really usable picture. Um, the next thing that I will 
do, and that will happen in a few days, is preparing a composite output mod for this specific Atari 2600 Junior. That means I will need to solder a few resistors on here, and then I can grab out the composite output from the TV ship. Because the TV ship actually does composite, but Atari never bothered to include a composite output on the back. But I think for today it should be enough. It was unpacking, cleaning and checking. And I think it was quite successful so far. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you soon with the composite mod and how to do it. Have a great time!